Thank you very much, Your Excellency Ruben Ramirez Lescano, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Paraguay and President of the OES Assembly. Uh, Secretary General Almagro, heads of delegations, permanent and alternative representatives of member states and observers of the OS, civil society organizations, ladies and gentlemen. It is quite an honor to present the 2023 annual report of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. The Commission continues to focus on its efficiency. In 2023, we achieved the initial study of 88% of over 2,000 petitions received and we approved 216 admissibility reports and 100 merit reports, a record for the Commission. 34 cases were submitted to the Inter-American Court and 32 friendly settlements agreements were homologated. Portfolio meetings with states to follow up on compliance with recommendations contributed to the Commission's effectiveness. 52 precautionary measures were processed through which 187 identified individuals and over 12,000 people from indigenous communities and traditional groups were protected. We published 10 thematic reports and two country reports in Peru and Nicaragua and issued one, 135 press releases and sent 81 requests of information to the states as input into our monitoring. We think the quantification of our work is important for transparency. With guidance from the states, academia and civil society, we adopted a prioritization policy that should ensure more timely justice and contribute to the development of inter-American standards. The Commission undertook two site visits to Bolivia and Honduras and 12 working promotional and cooperation visits to Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Costa Rica, the United States, Guyana, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, St. Lucia, Suriname, and Uruguay. Chapter 4A presents the achievements of the states, but also persistent human rights challenges, including the weakening of democratic institutions through threats to the separation of powers, threats to judicial independence, and autonomy of national human rights institutions. We document restrictions on civic spaces, violence and stigmatization, and indeed criminalization of human rights defenders and journalists, and repression of social protests. Impunity for discrimination and violence against historically marginalized populations are discussed, as is an intensification of the militarization of citizen security tasks and the recurrent application of states of exception. The use of force against people in, in human mobility, as well as the risk of violence during displacement, particularly the girl, in the case of women and girls, is also addressed in the report. And the report notes the consequences of excessive use of pre-trial detention and the lack of criminal policies with a human rights and social reintegration approach. Our region faces threats to multidimensional security because of the growth of non-state armed groups and the increase in the possession of firearms by private individuals. Chapter 4B of the annual report contains uh, documentation on Cuba, on Guatemala, on Nicaragua, and Venezuela. For Cuba, the report considers the absence of political pluralism and the prohibition of political association. We note the misuse of authorities in Guatemala, which threatened the legitimate outcome of the general elections. The report highlights intimidation and silencing of organized civil society and the arbitrary deprivation of nationality of 317 people in Nicaragua, as it does document repression against individuals and organizations that defend rights, express dissent, or as perceived as opponents in Venezuela. Chapter 5 of the annual report includes follow-up reports and recommendations made to Brazil, El Salvador, and Mexico, and reinforces the special mechanisms in Bolivia and Chile, as well as the installation of a new special mechanism on Colombia. During 2023, I'm proud to say we reached 83,000 people through 177 training events and over 200 promotional events. We held three sessions in hybrid format, the first which was held in Los Angeles, California, and we thank the states and civil society in the region for their participation in 70 hearings held during 2023. I want to recognize the work and contributions of the Commission's two special rapporteurs. And I thank civil society, OS member states and observers, international and regional organizations, of course, Secretary General Almagro and his team for the support provided to the Commission to achieve the accomplishments presented in the 2023 annual report. It is worth noting in the 65th year of the Commission that our independent human rights system can only contribute to more rights for more people, the slogan of our strategic plan, with the constructive support of states and civil society. 
and I take the opportunity to thank Costa Rica for their support on our 65th uh, commemoration resolution. Finally, I thank the commissioners and the staff of the Executive Secretariat, led by uh, our uh, Executive Secretary Tanya Renon. I invite you to read the report, to reference it, and indeed to contribute to the next report, 2024. Thank you very much.